Hopefully you got that. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Mike Levy and welcome back to another field test video. Who remembers Yeti's SB100? I sure do because even though it was released way back in 2018, it's still one of my favorite bikes. Well, now Yeti has something new, sort of new, but I'm going to explain that in a little bit. First, meet Yeti's SB115. Yeti's paired that 115 millimeters of rear wheel travel with a 130 millimeter travel Fox 34, and they spec components like a 50 millimeter stem, 780 millimeter wide handlebar, long travel dropper post, and 30 millimeter wide rims from DT Swiss. Not only that, but the stock build comes with a 2.5 inch wide Maxxis DHF on the front and a 2.3 inch wide Maxxis Aggressor on the back, both with XO casing. So while the Scalpel and the Epic are more likely to see Lycra and maybe one or two post-ride beers, bikes like this Yeti, along with the Transition and the Revel, are gonna see baggy shorts and maybe a few pre-ride beers. The SB115's new name, it makes all the sense in the world given how much travel it has, but the front and the rear triangles are not new. Those are actually the exact same as what Yeti used for the SB100. What is new is that small linkage piece that drives the shock, and the shock itself is also a slightly longer stroke to deliver more travel. All this stuff down here, Yeti calls it their switch infinity system, and no, those two little gold tubes are not tiny shocks. The black carrier moves up and down and it lets Yeti control the bike's axle path. Initially, as the bike goes into its travel, the carrier goes upward, and that provides a rearward axle path. Then, as the bike goes deeper into its travel, that carrier moves downward, which reduces chain tension, and it lets the suspension deal with hard impacts better. Okay, let's look at some other details, including two ISCG tabs around the BB92 bottom bracket shell. So that lets you mount one of those little tiny upper chain guides if you think you need it. Cable routing is all internal, and it's also tube in tube. So that means you just push it through, and it should come out the other side without you having to scream or throw anything at the bike. Another thing to mention, look how far that top tube drops down. With the seat slammed, this thing feels like a BMX bike. You have a ton of standover clearance. If we're comparing bikes, which is exactly what we're doing here, you probably notice that the Yeti has some conservative but still modern numbers. And now that's because, like I've mentioned a few times already, this is based around that SB100 frame. They're using the same mold, so of course the geometry is going to be similar. It's important to remember that slacker and longer, well, it doesn't mean better. We're all shaped differently, we ride different trails, we like different things. So look at the Yeti's geo chart and see what works for you. One last detail to point out, Yeti's done a real nice job with frame protection here. There's a nice pad underneath the down tube and the chain stay and the seat stays both have protection on them as well. Okay, let's talk about models and pricing. The range topper, it goes for $8,000 and it comes with an XX1 drivetrain. This one that I've been riding, it's the $6,900 USD T2 version that comes with an X01 drivetrain, Fox factory suspension, and DT Swiss's XM1700 wheels. So all that adds up to 27.1 pounds with our Schwalbe control tires and no pedals or bottle cage on the bike. Frame weight, well, Yeti says that the Turk frame, a medium-sized version, weighs 5.8 pounds with a Fox shock. So those are all the details about Yeti's new SB115. Up next, we're gonna talk about how this bike rides. We've been riding these bikes in Squamish a ton, but before we get into that, tell mm -hmm. me about your ride setup. Of course, we installed the Schwalbe tires and they were inflated to the same pressure as all the other bikes. Now, right out of the gate, the Yeti is good to go. It has a short stem and a wide handlebar and a long travel dropper post that make it obvious that this bike is ready for some challenging terrain. As far as suspension goes, on the front, there's a Fox 34, which is different than the SIDS that are on the front of all my other bikes. So this is actually a 130 millimeter 34 with a Fit4 cartridge. And I kept that in the open setting and for the rear, 30% sag.
And that brings us to climbing. How did this thing climb? Yeah, so there's actually two different stories here with this Yeti SB115. It definitely could turn tighter, steer quicker, steer sharper than bikes like the Spur and the Revel. In those situations where you're going zero miles an hour, you know, and you're snaking back and forth and it's just like switchback after switchback after switchback, yeah, the Yeti definitely took less effort than those other two bikes. And then what about on the less technical climbs? Does it feel really active or does it feel yeah. like it's sufficient? So yeah, when you're out of the seat and you're throwing your body weight around, it does move more than those other, uh, maybe a little bit more cross country orientated bikes. And that active suspension also helps it in the tech tricky climbing as well too. The bike feels like it has a lot of traction. And the result is, I mean, you just look where you want to go and this thing goes up the stuff. Where maybe those less forgiving bikes, you kind of have to think a little more. You don't have you to know? choose your line too much. You can be a little bit you know, right. less cautious about right. where you're pointing the bike. Right, exactly. So bottom line, there were times when the SB115 almost felt like more of a trail bike than a cross country bike. The SB115 definitely has a bit of a unique character, where the SB100, it felt like this knife that like, you, you ride it precise. The 115 is a lot more forgiving as you would expect it to be with that 130 millimeter fork up front. And because of that, you can carry more speed over the rough stuff, the bike takes less out of you. And it definitely feels more forgiving than some of the other bikes here. What about on higher speed trails? What was that like? On the higher speed stuff, you can feel that this bike is shorter. You can feel that the frame, it's the same frame as the SB100 with a 450 millimeter reach for this large. Uh, it's shorter and it's less stable. It can, you know, it can feel like this sometimes. It is a weird sort of combination of quickish handling because of that mm -hmm. and forgiving suspension, which really suits terrain that is rolling and tight and maybe not super steep or super fast, those sorts of places, the Yeti can really cover a lot of ground. Um, when it does get steeper and when it does get going really fast, yeah, I mean, you can't keep up to bikes like the Spur and the Revel. That's mm -hmm. bottom line, that's what it is. And that I think comes down to the geometry of this bike and it's based on the SB100. Yeti's other bikes are fairly progressive if we're talking geometry and, and this isn't. And mm -hmm. Compared to a handful of these newer bikes that we have here, that's obvious. Bottom line, if you have challenging terrain, yeah, I was going a little slower on the descents and a little slower when things got tricky. It's time to look at the timed laps. How did the Yeti SB115 fare? Yeah, so the overall lap, the entire lap, that includes obviously the descent and the climb, it was fifth overall out of five bikes. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the descent, it was fourth out of fifth. And then we did the efficiency test. Uh, this Yeti, it had the slowest time. I mean, it's six pounds heavier than, yeah, that makes a than the Epic yeah. Evo, right? Yeah, like people will you know, change their wheels out to shave a couple of grams. Yeah, six it, pounds, like you're gonna notice that. Exactly, so it was the slowest bike on the efficiency test, but on the trail, it felt more like a quick trail bike. Yeti made a whole lot of smart decisions when they spec this bike. It's ready to go. It has some wide aluminum rims from DT Swiss that have held up very well, uh, and a 130 millimeter Fox fork on the front, which I think makes a lot of sense for this bike with a three position fit damper. The cockpit, big wide handlebar, short stem, and a long travel dropper post, and four piston brakes. So right out of the gate, this thing is ready to go. Well, let's get into pros and cons then. What were some of your favorite things about this bike? I think my favorite thing about this bike is the suspension. Uh, it stays super quiet. It doesn't move around when you're moving around. It doesn't move around much when you're pedaling. But at the same time, it's very compliant. It takes in all the small stuff. It feels supportive. Uh, it doesn't bottom out hard. So they've done a really good job there. And what about the not so good stuff? What were some of the cons? Honestly, I think Yeti missed a beat with the geometry. Uh, the reach could be longer. The front end could be a bit, little bit slacker. Um, as it is, it can't really compete with the likes of like the Spur and the Revel Ranger. It feels handling wise like it'd be a little too quick. Um, but I mean, you know, if your terrain is tighter and slower, it might be just the ticket. 
all things considered, who's gonna buy this bike? Who's the SB115 for? Yeah, I'll tell you who it's not for, and that's for somebody who's gonna race cross country. It's definitely not a race bike. Uh, what it is though is extremely forgiving and it still has nimble handling. So if you want something that maybe is a little more forgiving than your average cross country bike, uh, but you don't need those slack angles or anything like that, the SB115 might be a good option. Okay, there you have it, Yeti's SB115. Stay tuned for more reviews and roundtable discussions from the cross country field test.